Yo, what's up, YouTube family? It's your boy, Money Bag Cool, back at you with another hot TikTok reaction video. Like, subscribe, hit that notification bell. Let's go. Man, y'all know what I'm finna say. It's not a coincidence, man. It's straight blasphemy. It's straight mockery of the... They put it in front of our faces, man. They put it in the movies, the TV shows, and the cartoons, man. The Simpsons have been telling us, man. Hey, it's, it's wicked out here. It's wicked. <laughs> Tell me that evil, the devil, Satan, or whatever you want to call him or it is not real, man. It's obvious they pin it in our faces, man. Point blank, period, man. In 1966, the CIA classified a book. This book was about the end of the world. Now, the man who wrote this book said that the Earth experiences regular events that end intelligent life. And we're actually the sixth intelligent civilization. Now the event in question is a pole shift. In 2013, the CIA declassified a bunch of this book, but there was about 53 pages that were heavily redacted. They've never said why. Now around 11,600 years ago, the Earth did experience a pole shift of about 15 degrees. That period is known as the Younger Dryas. So if we were to experience a pole shift today, what could we expect? So the Earth spins at about a thousand miles an hour, and in a polar shift, the land masses practically stop. This sudden stop could cause earthquakes, thousand mile an hour winds, massive tidal waves. Imagine being in a planet sized car that gets into an accident and nobody's wearing a seatbelt. Now we don't know why the CIA classified this book, but today it is something that you're able to go read even though it's still heavily redacted. Search The Adam and Eve Story by Dr. Chan Thomas. Yeah, y'all think it's a game? Go watch that movie 2012. <laughs> Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
all I'm going to ask you, do you think that's Cap? You seen it like I seen it. I didn't see no cutting in the footage or nothing. What is really going on, man? <laughs> that's all I want to know. You can find your car keys, find a parking place. You can make money in the stock market. And my opinion is that the most important thing you can do with remote viewing is discover who you are. Now, it's important for me to tell you that remote viewing is not a spiritual path. But if you learn to quiet your mind and move your awareness into timeless awareness, you are likely to begin to experience things that surprise you, give you another view of reality. For example, if you look in the mirror in the morning and think that who you see in that mirror is who you really are, you're in for a lot of suffering, in my experience. My opinion is that who you really are is non-local awareness, independent of space and time. You are that awareness that allows you to move your ex experience, to move your consciousness, to move your perception anywhere in the world, independent of space and time. y'all seen Barry? I seen him. My name is and I am a former United States Army military specialist. After I got out of the military, I moved up here. I've lived here since that time, over 35 years. The reason I moved up here is because knowing what I knew being in the military intelligence, number one hot spot for the Russians to bomb. So if a nuclear bomb were to go off, I might see a flash. That would be it. There would be no suffering. His identity has been concealed for his own safety. What I am about to tell you is classified on the highest level of security in our federal government. Telling you this could get me sent to Leavenworth for the rest of my life. During the height of the Cold War, I worked in a telecommunications center which delivered all of the high priority messages. It was not uncommon for most everybody in my office to have a top secret security clearance. Basically, there's unclass, and then there's what they call unclass EFTO, which stands for encrypted for transmission only. And then you go from there to confidential, secret, top secret. And top secret is the, the, the highest one that anybody in the federal government can have. But above top secret, there is five levels of access. But different people, because of the background investigations that were done on them, had a top secret access level one or two. I had a three. Most of the people in the Pentagon have a three or a four. And of course, the president and everybody around him has a five. Our most important job was to make sure that the president had the information that he needed as fast as possible. One day in 1983, he decoded a message that left him and his colleagues completely perplexed. We saw this message come through and I ended up processing it and we noticed the subject line on it was Alaskan Black Pyramid. The message itself was destined for at least 10 or 15 different commanders within our vicinity of different units. We all read the message and it pretty much gave longitude and latitude of where this Alaskan Black Pyramid was. Before they could figure out what this pyramid was, they had to figure out where that location could be. Things human were never meant to see part. That ain't the first time we heard about them black pyramids either, man. We heard about them being in Antarctica also, but Alaska, man, where, where else are these black pyramids located? I wonder. Y'all know we gonna get to the bottom of this, right? Yeah. Let me know if you want to get to the bottom of this in the comment section. Comment. Let's get to the bottom of this. 24. Stephen Hawking. He said God is a fairy tale. After that, he was diagnosed hey. with ALS. His failing speech. <laughs> Special, he 
much it passes that critical point. Then you'll never be able to get out again in the hell of fucking back. Sound like to me that he still don't get it or quite understand. I don't know. He said God himself could not sink this ship. After that, the Titanic sunk. saying of the Lord works in the mysterious ways that's one of the ways I guess whoever running this matrix hate natural woman all of your favorite artists after they go through the industry after years they end up being like feminine and stuff bro they rap about fucking hoes and shit but they, they carry they self they energy is very feminine I go off energy. I learned human anatomy. I told all y'all niggas, you have to stop watching porn. And go 30 to 60 days without nothing. You can't, so you ain't gonna be able to see what I see. Oh, hold up, man. Y'all wasn't throwing up no hand signs, trying to block my eye, none of that other stuff, man. I just gotta let y'all know, man. My forehead and my eye was itching right there, man. I guess some of y'all stay third out, but I don't be saying that, man. My forehead was itching. Oh, soon as a girl starts shaking her ass in front of you, you like a dog. You like you at your not your your lowest state of your consciousness, bro. We all watch these cartoons, Dragon Ball Z, Super Saiyan levels, different levels within you. That shit is real. You got different levels of your mind that make. If you're a lazy person, it's a certain level within you that that will make you get up and hit the gym. It ain't even a thought. If you're a person that ain't got no confidence, it's a level within you, nigga, you will become a fucking godlike streamer or a YouTuber or a public speaker. It ain't no thoughts. You don't have to think. It's you. All of that is being taken away by porn. Every time you even try to stop, enough, if you're addicted, what happened? That fucking sexual spirit bring your ass right back to it. Mmm. What y'all think about that? Yo, somebody's been lying, but we're about to get to the bottom of it. The truth is hidden in plain sight. Did you know that? All right, this movie right here is called Queen of the Dam, starring Aaliyah. Now, did you know that this connects to North America? Did you know that this also connects to the 2030 map? It's a disastrous map, right? If you didn't know, I'm going to show you. Let's get into it. So in ancient times, cultures like the Greeks and the Egyptians seen this region, the Americas, as the underworld. And if you look at the guys that were sent to Tartarus, they were sent in this direction, okay? So with this being considered the underworld, the inhabitants of the underworld would be considered damned, right? And Aaliyah represented the queen of the damned. Dodge the hijack, all right? Aaliyah was also a Native American or an original inhabitant of the Americas, all right? So that made her a direct representative of this land. And this land is regarded as the underworld. So the reason that movie connects is because she's the queen of the damned. Now what's more damned than a land that has 91,757 dams, right? And this right here is a map of the major dams in the United States as of 2006, okay? 8,100 major dams. Have you heard about the mud floods? So apparently, the mud flood was a worldwide cataclysm that took place sometimes in the 1800s, all right? A disaster that wiped out a worldwide advanced civilization and allowed the nations as we know them today to rise up. And we know these nations today corrupt, right? So who did they replace? They replaced the righteous, 
all right the event was a mud flood in which several meters of mud washed in and buried the ground levels of houses and buildings everywhere all right and then you find depictions like this these people don't look like they're witnessing everything they love getting destroyed they look like they're witnessing everything they hate being destroyed in order for them to take over something. I've posted a lot of videos on my page that shows how they created dams in flooded towns, right? Mud Flood 101, okay? And with all these major dams, that means they still control the water. And we know how much the past just loves to repeat itself, right? History just loves to be repeated. So at any moment, this could become a modern document instead of something from the past. And all it takes is a boom. That's what you'll hear. And then here comes the water. We all know the story of Noah's Ark, built from gopher wood, also known as Terea taxifolia, all right, the Florida nutmeg, found in Florida. Right? So if anybody's in Florida and y'all know how to build a ship, you might want to get started. Because I don't know about you, but I've been looking up at the stars and it's the signs of the times, as above, so below. Right? And everything's going crazy right now. I'm just saying. So Aaliyah, the American Indian, the queen of the damned, America, 91,000 dams, right? Put it together. If anything happens, I'm going to need y'all to build this ship <laughs> and get me a ticket. And then after that, Man, I think my dude is on to something, man. Let me know what you think about that in the comment section down below. Okay, so, so that I stay safe and I can come back and I stay alive, I want to tell you something. I will give you a hint of what, what's, what, what he showed me. It's going to happen. And you have to get rid of these metals in your body. And I know exactly how to do it very easily. If you want to do it fast and quick, it would be green drinks. There's something with chlorophyll that has to do with it, it matches, it's very close to your blood uh, in its structure, that's all I'm going to say. Okay, so there, you have to have a carrier that will grab things and take them out of your body, okay? So, if you want to know what's going to happen, and it could happen tomorrow, it could happen, but they're going to say it's something else. You're going to have to do your own thinking about this. I don't want to get in trouble, but just stick a piece of foil in a microwave and um, picture that in your body because you can't see a microwave, but you can see the results of it when it's in pre and present and you know to not put foil in the microwave because you just do it once and then you have, you have a fireworks show that the neighbors talk about. Because frequencies affect different things. And if something is coming that is intentional, if it hits something that stops it. Man, I hope y'all paying attention. Case file 131, Alaskan Cave Demons. Declassification initiated. Alaskan Cave Demons, or Demo Il Alaskai, are an extinct race of very violent and terrifying creatures. The entirety of the population was wiped out in a secret government operation in 1934. They resided within the Alaskan deep cave system. Information known about the demons includes they were known to kill anyone and anything that ventured down into their caves. Presiding over all the demons was a queen who had much more unnatural growth than the others in the form of horns protruding from her head. She lived in a palace, which was a testament to the demon's extraordinary architectural ability. 
which they utilized to build large underground cities in which they lived. How many of y'all have heard of them? And the government knows this. The government knows that when these motherfuckers hit 100%, there is no peace. It's war, chaos, and destruction. They understand and know this. So what they're trying to do is get the masses to take the job, get the masses to uh, fall victim to the system and not awaken to who they are before it's too late because they know once the carbon beings of this planet, the indigenous, the motherfuckers who really own and protect this realm, the true rulers, it's over. They know when we hit 100%, cuz it's not all peace. Because let me tell you something, when you hit 100% and you act 100% of your, activate 100% of your DNA, do you realize all your memory gonna come back? You gonna remember all the shit that these motherfuckers have done to you for eons. Think about that. Remember, you already know what these people have done to you. But guess what? When you came here through the womb portal, your memory was wiped. But guess what? Your memory is going to come back. All your DNA, all your talents, gifts, skills, uh, superpower abilities, whatever you want to call it, is going to come back online. Also, your memory. Look, you thought this human experience was something, however old you, however old you are. Hey, I ain't gonna lie, he definitely on to something, y'all. For the ones who know, know. They always say like in the summertime, black folk don't act right. Mm -hmm. It's not that black folk don't act right in the summertime, it's just that black folk come to their senses when it's warm. Because if that were true, Los Angeles would always be in an uproar. What happens is when you're in a warm climate in New York City, those memories are reinvigorated. Those ideas come together. You visit your family more often. You eat the fruits that you used to eat back home. You start to think. And when people try to dominate you, you start saying, wait a minute, no. Nah. No, psychologically, we go back to ourselves when we're in the climate that we left. During the 1960s, there were something called the Long Hot Summer Riots. In 1967 alone, there were a hundred and something race riots all around the country. So then it'd be Johnson, he put together something called the Kerner Commission to try to figure out what was going on, why these riots were going on. Why were black people tripping like this so hard? Because black people normally wake up during the summertime. We, we feel a sense of our naturalness, so a lot of black people would wake up during the summer. So they wanted to figure out why black people were rioting at this time so much. So the Kerner Commission came up with the natural answer, black people were fed up with racism. But the government was basically like, okay, look, we've always been racist, so that ain't it. Why are they tripping now? So there was a guy named Moynihan, Senator Moynihan, who was also a sociologist. He came up with a theory and he said basically, after the Civil Rights Act was signed, America kept making all of these promises to African American people that the government knew they weren't gonna keep. They kept telling black people they're gonna get equality, equal housing, equal jobs, fair this, equal that. And they knew they weren't gonna keep these promises and black people were getting frustrated and upset because those promises were not being met. So Moynihan came up with a solution. He said, let's put together a public policy called benign neglect. And benign neglect basically means, look, if we don't promise black folk stuff, they won't expect nothing, they can't get mad. So this benign neglect public policy is in place to this very day. And this is why African-American issues are never discussed on a national level. And they talk about minority issues as if that's synonymous with African-American and it's not. I definitely, definitely think there's some truth to that. Let me know what you think down below in the comment section, especially if you're black. During the Gullah Wars, we had the alligators fighting on the side of us. We would train the alligators to attack. We would swim with them in the water, and they would take us wherever we needed to go. This is baby Horus standing on alligators, holding snakes in his hands. And then the invaders would come in with their attacks on us, not knowing that we got these alligators well trained down here in the south. It was once all dense forests and swamps. They would try to sneak up on us, and the alligators would get to them before we could. I'm talking about ripping them into shreds. It got so bad that they started building bridges across the waters so they won't come into contact with these alligators. They would try to take out all of our alligators, but they wasn't giving up. And every time they come back, we'll have more alligators waiting for them. The invaders finally had enough, and they would give up. They were telling people, keep y'all freedom. We out of here. 
The alligators will swim from Florida, Mississippi, all the way up to Indiana and come back down. You guys remember the crocodile hunter? He learned how to tame animals from us. This is all an ancient practice. This is also why some people wear the alligator tooth around their neck. The alligator is sacred to us. And some older guys love alligator shoes, not even knowing why. We have family in the animal kingdom, and the alligator is special to us. Horse is also represented as Jesus. Horse will get anointed with crocodile oil. Jesus will get anointed with olive oil. And baby horse had an indestructible energy. He had divine powers within, and he knew all the animals loved him and would never hurt him. Peace, love, and light. Hope y'all like the lecture. Bill Geechee. Hey, I definitely believe some truth to that too, man. Like I say, you learn something new every day. Let me know if you learned something today from this video down below in the comment section. And one more thing, if you liking the video so far, go ahead, do me a favor, hit that like button. You know, it helps boost, boost the videos out to, you know, other people in the algorithm that might like the videos too. Thank you in advance. Let's get it, let's get it, let's get it. Now, this book you want to get is on, see, all you had to do to get past this devil stuff is study the damn thing, but we don't study nothing. Because we're so stuck in religion, we can't get past it. Here's a book called Devil, the, Protect, the, the Perspectives of Evil in Antiquity and Primitive Christianity. Jeffrey Burton Russell. Now, the devil has horns. You see the horns on the devil. Anybody ever seen the black goddess Hathor or Heru with the horns? That's where they got it from. The Greeks barred the horns and put on the god Pan. The Christians trying to turn everything against that wasn't in their religion evil. They turned the picture of Hathor, the golden calf in the Bible, as evil. Later on, they turned the god Pan, which is the later form of the god type and the oldest one, evil. You see what I'm saying? So when they talk about the devil is evil, they're talking about the most ancient god who is God. Jesus said, Satan, get behind me, which means I'm backed by the powers of Satan. Let me explain this. Let me show you a picture of this. You all got to get this stuff and bear witness to it. Let me show you a picture of this. Look, just get you a regular picture of the yin and yang sign so everybody know what I'm talking about. Everybody seen the yin and yang sign. You call it the kung fu sign. Right? is light that means Christ right that means Christ but that's putting the cart before the heart that's why you couldn't get back to your ancient Jew because you put the cart before the heart the light comes from the black in the beginning there was blackness and then there comes light the black is called Satan Satan or uh, Satan or soot soot the black soot in your head is the medulla oblongata behind your neck where's the most concentrated part of the melanin at the base of the skull and the top of the spine so when jesus says satan get behind me he's saying i got my battery which raises the black dot and turns me into christ you see what i'm saying because from the because from the darkness you get the light and without the darkness you can't get the light so you've been worshiping the light and the white water unlocked up all your dark stuff which is the battery in the, in the British Museum. So you've been worshiping the vehicle, which is a car, but a car is only aluminum and fiberglass. The real stuff to run a car is the carbonated battery and the gas, but the gas comes from crude oil, which is what? Carbon. That's the mysteries of Satan. So when he say Satan get behind me, it's a metaphysical book talking about the head of the Christ. You are all Christ, because this is not written in your law that you are all gods. The, the black part where the melanin is is called the mouth of God. This is the battery too. You call a medulla oblongata, the mouth of God. So when he says Satan get behind me, he's talking about I'm backed by the, the powers of my father, Satan. Satan comes from the word soot, soot on. Soot, which means black, and on Anubis, which is the dog, which means opener, comes from the dog star. It's later on, it's the word sootek. And Sutek becomes the word Melchizedek. And Jesus is of, all, of the order of what? Melchizedek. Melchizedek is Satan. That's why the, the mystery of the Bible is it ain't talking about no devil up under no ground. Satan simply means the Nubian. When you translate it. Bet. Prove me right on this because you're supposed to be grown now. If ain't no devil under no ground, then what the hell the white man talking about when he worship you? He's talking about the mysteries of the ancient black man. Bobby Hemet, boy, 
uh, I think it's more to that one too though But uh, let me know how y'all feel about that one Down below in the comment section And y'all it's the end of the video I know it was a quick one But I hope it was a good one for y'all It's your boy Kuzi I'm out till next time And if you're new to the channel Don't forget to like, subscribe, hit the notification bell On your way out Holla